welcome to another episode of the forum that's right this is forum six i want to thank everyone that's just been a part of this you know um it's been a good show but before i go any further let me introduce you to my co-host once again bowtie bruce how's it going man hey another day in paradise another day in paradise so hey that we have a great show ahead of you i mean basically these next few episodes of the forum i mean we the election is coming we have four weeks just under three, just five weeks, huh? Th uh, yeah, just under five, five weeks. weeks. So, yeah, well, um, it's going down. By the time you see this show, I don't know where it's going to be. It may be four weeks, maybe three weeks. But we're working on it. We couldn't do it without um, the help from our audience, right? I'm telling you. It's going down. So what's been going on? No, just the election. Like he said, the election coming up. So you're only going to see me for a few minutes this episode. And we're going to bring out Dave Edwards to get with the program. But this is Charles and Bruce time. This isn't Charles and Dave time yet. So, what's going on in back? Steve Jobs. Let's give it up to my man. Everybody know by now, Steve Jobs just had his first anniversary of his, the day he died, and um, Apple did a lot for him. I like that little spread they did on Apple for him. Yeah. You know, that was nice. That's the man, you know what I mean? A, a lot of what you're doing is because of that dude right there. You know what I mean? Right. And that's our entrepreneurship right there. We're going to do a couple shows on entrepreneurs, businesses, people that started from nothing and just out here working and they making it. It's good. I like this. Like Vacville Public Access Television. Pac entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. It's going down. And if you want to be a part of Vacville Television Access and come down and learn and do what we do, like I always say, contact me, ACW Pro. Production, ACW Production at Yahoo.com. You see it written down there. Or you can get Bruce, what's it? It's going to be Bowtie Bruce 13 at Yahoo.com. That's capital B, capital T, capital B, 1 3 at Yahoo.com. You know what else going on? The vice president debate will be tomorrow. So okay. again, by the time you see this show, the vice president debate would have had, had happened already. And Biden, and I don't even know that other dude's name. I, so I don't know. Whatever his name is, we don't care anyway because we're voting for Obama and Biden. We ride, you ride, what, where are you going? Yeah, we all know I'm voting for Obama. Okay, well, we are. You could, no, the first four years is one of those things like he's playing for the second four years, right? Am I wrong here? Right. So I want to see, of course, the first four years, he's going to do what everybody wants him to do. The second four years, I want to see what he's gonna really gonna do. It's gonna be on the cracking, and I just found him. His name is Ryan. They do Ryan. We don't vote for them. And that's another thing. Look, you got a lot of um, things to vote on right now. It's not just the presidential election. I need you to vote for your city, your local elections that's going on right now. Some mayors, some city council people, some uh, school superintendents. You know, you need to find out who's running your city, and. And get on it. You know, you can't just vote for the president because these people that's running the city right now, that's running for assembly, running for Senate, your local city, they'll be the ones that's running for the national um, elections later. Right. So you need to find out what's going on with them right now. So when, they, when you see their name in a national election, they want to be the governor. You'll know who they is, you right. know, what they've done, what they stand for, if they change in their platform. A lot of them do that. Right. You know, like Bruce said, I got my man Dave Edwards coming on this show. Mm -hmm. Dave, Dave. Dave is the president of the Vacaville Access Television Station, and he's also the host of... Get With The Program. Get With The Program. It's a great show. We run it on Vacaville Access Channel 27 all the time. All the time. It's good. So mm -hmm. when Bruce... He's giving up. We talked about this a couple of shows before. Bruce going to give up his seat for Dave to come on, and uh, we can discuss some issues, and I can already know we will not stay on topic. <laughs> I already know. Dave is like that, and I'm like that. You know, we get to talk, and let's just talk, man. That's what this show is about. Dialogue. Dialogue. That's what it's about. No right, no wrong. Again, because what? Your truth? It's not your truth. It may not be my truth. My truth? May not be my truth. I'm just saying, though, you watching the forum, it's going down. So what else we got going on? Um, let's see. We have the election. We have a lot of things going on in Vacaville and in Fairfield. Um, the, this gas, I should scream that this gas is ridiculous. You know, I... Back in the day, the only reason that businesses would and people would listen is if you stop patronizing them. And of course, we can't stop driving forever. 
for at least one day out the month, we got to say, we ain't buying no gas. Right. Nobody, nobody go to a gas station. You know what I mean? And it may take, it may take you to stay at home. It may take you to just, but one day, it may cost you some money to do that. But the money that it costs you that day, you'll make back up later because they'll listen. They ain't going to listen to you if you, you keep on, they raising the prices and you keep buying, but you screaming, but you pumping. I hate these people. You know, I hate cancer. You know what I mean? Uh, you can't do that. Oh, speaking it, of. It took the words right out of my mouth. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's Breast Cancer. You know what? Next show, because it will be, we'll shoot in October, I'll be wearing a pink shirt. Or I will chroma keep my shirt green, pink. Uh, okay. Or a pink band, something, because we support breast cancer awareness. I don't know what's going on in the 707 with breast cancer, but um, we're getting ready to find out so we can let you know. I don't know if I ever told you, but Mama Bowtie had breast cancer. Oh, no, yeah, no, she yeah. did. Yeah, she's surviving it. It's been about a year or two now. Like, you know how like her hair is about down to here? That's because she went through chemo and all that stuff. Her hair used to be like down to her tuckus. So. Okay, whatever a tuckus is. Hey. You know, my no. man, uh, man said, uh, who was that? Stretch said, we don't say buttocks no more. Mm. So I guess tuckus, we're going to put tuckus where buttocks is. We don't, we, that's where it's at. Okay, so, but I feel you. I feel you, but I want you to go on the internet, find out what's happening in your local areas dealing with the breast cancer, Susan G. Coma. I'm sure she know a lot of things that's mm -hmm. going on. Find out what's going on and support breast cancer awareness. We will bring somebody on on here. We will bring somebody on that, that deals with that. I will not speak on this subject alone, no. nor will Bruce, because we only know basics, huh? I hardly even know that. We know it's not good, and we will support, you know, so that's what's happening. October's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Support breast cancer awareness any way that you can. I'm not sure if you know this. I just got preseason tickets the other day. Man, it is football season. Basketball played too many games. 800 games. Nobody want to watch no 80-something games. It's 82 um, games. 82 games. 82 That's 82 like 800. Games. That's like 800. <laughs> Yeah, you know I mean, so we it's football season, and it's going down. I want to give it up to um, a few people. Um, let's give it up to Larry, Larry White down there, Cook Soul um, Karate School. Yeah, yeah. Man, you always talking about your kids don't have anything to do. You know what I mean? Karate is so. I mean, I've joined. I am a white belt beginner. All this fighting I used to do, I just threw it out the window. I put my hands in Master White, and I'm letting him take it over, you know. And so when you see me in six months, I may look like this, but, hey, <laughs> it's going down, I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Well, I've had a few conversations with Master White myself, and you know how a lot of these karate, mixed martial arts guys are all, like, super tough and hardcore? He is super tough and hardcore, but he's also just the nicest guy. Yeah, yeah. You catch. That's what I'm saying. You can't be judging these books by a cover. You walk in the club, you drink, and you see that dude. He look like he ain't nobody. Man, this kid, them cats will. Ch Man, the stuff I've learned in just a few weeks I've been there. I need to go get them registered right now. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you, man. It's it's these pressure points that just yeah. ain't no joke. Well, yeah, it's going down. I got my class B's. Uh oh. It's going down. Hey, limousine company is running good. But yeah, you're talking about your kids don't have nothing to do. You know, it's they sitting at home all the time playing video games. Take them out and getting karate's and ladies. Look, it's starting to get dark a little bit earlier now. You know what I mean? Self defense. He teaches self defense, and you can go with your kids and dad get down there with your son and and make it a family thing and learn this as good as a good as discipline. You know, and also my man, um, the Matt Garcia Foundation. Right. You know, they got a they got a television station, PAL or something. They got a TV for kids down there. They're trying to take our jobs. <laughs> Look, yeah, but my man, uh, Ray Cartermarsh, he got it going on. They running that, that um, Matt Garcia Foundation pretty good. I like everything that I see about yeah. it. You know, I've heard, you know, some organization, they say they're doing this good, but then this way they dropping the ball. Yeah. Nothing. They 100. And that's another thing that your kids can get involved in also. Get down there to that Matt Garcia Foundation. You know what I mean? I like it. I love it.
give it up to La Cabana. Hey, hey, that food down there, I've been hitting that spot. <sighs> Ridiculous. It's going down. Also, people always say the kids don't got anything to do. Duke Center's right next door to the public access station. They, Duke got, Center. they got their basketball programs. You got your boxing programs. Once again, it's not Cook Soul, but it still teaches them self-defense and discipline in another way. So, I, think that, I don't know. know if he can do their moves if he ain't a member yet. We're going to get Bruce in there in about two weeks. Yeah, After you. he passes Class B license. Now, you see, we got him studying. This is what it's all about. Never stop reinventing yourself. Never stop educating yourself. I mean, I'm going to honestly be in school for the rest of my life. There you go. You know what I mean? You know, I want to give it up to all the people that's watching the shows, turning to Channel 27 in Fairfield, turning to Channel 27 in Vacaville, helping support the local te access television station. And then once again, um, we teach here on Tuesday nights from 7 to 9. Come on down and, and learn this. Bring your kid down. You come down, you can be in front of the camera. Behind the camera. You can be behind the camera. Be an editor. You can be an editor. Lights. Audio. Audio. Set design. Green screen. Chroma key. You can be an announcer. You can go out there and shoot some of the local events. We got a lot of local events coming up, especially next month. You know what November is. My birthday month. See what I'm talking about? Deanna Lynn's day. So you make me feel like a jerk now. I'm going to start airing that Deanna Lynn show. That was a great show. I want you to watch that Deanna Lynn show and then go to her website because they're still, right now, today, trying to solve that murder. Right. You know, and that makes no sense. All these people in Vacaville, somebody know. I believe. You believe? I believe. Don't be scared now. You can talk. You no, believe? I, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Also, that was my first, like, major, major shoot, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot Bruce shot that show. Yeah, you did a great job on that show. Behind the scenes and in front of the scenes, you did a good job on that show. No, because every All thank right. you very much. Uh, everything else I knew was always like this little little shoot here, little shoot there, but that was the first major shoot I've ever done. I like that show. That show came out very, very well. And I want you to watch it. We'll be airing the De Deanna Lynn Memorial. I think it was shot like two years ago, and it will air all month. You will love that show. You make sure you check that show out. You watching Charles White and my man Bowtie Bruce. And when we come back, I will have sitting right here for the first time, not only for the first time, but our first guest. Yes, this is our first guest ever on the show. And if you want to be a guest on the show and you want to spread your views and talk to myself, Bruce or myself, you contact me at acwproduction at yahoo.com or you can contact Bruce at bowtiebruce13 at yahoo.com, capital B, capital T, capital B. I'm just saying, though, contact us and we will have you on the show. Y'all check us out. We'll be right back with you. You've been watching the forum. Prelude to Dave Edwards to get with the program. All right. Okay. Live. Hey, how you doing? This is Charles White. I'm back, and like I told you, it is going down. My man Bruce stepped out for a minute, made room for our specialist here. Now, this guy right here, I'm going to tell you, sometimes when, he, when I'm talking to him, I got, I, I'm looking for a secret service to come through. This guy just knows so much about everything. One of my very, very good friends. We just brought him back in. To be our, he's, our, he's the form political analysts on the show and let me introduce him from get with the program dave edwards how you doing charles white nice to nice to be here i'm so glad you invited me on today okay that's good well you know me and bruce told you we was gonna have you right that's true okay that's good now i brought let me tell you why i brought dave on we just had the presidential debate right that's true okay now i'm gonna time stamp this show um it was october the third a couple days ago and before i go any further Give it up to my man Steve Jobs. This is his anniversary. He passed today. 
Well, let me get back to that. I got to say that again. I know Bruce brought that up before, but let me just say that again. Steve Jobs, Apple, I'm just saying though. So anyway, the presidential debate has just passed and right off the bat, everybody's saying Romney just won it hands down. What does that, what does that mean, Romney won the debate hands down? That means that the debates meant nothing. It was just a dog and pony show. I didn't even spend my time watching it. See? So and why is that? Yeah. Is it because that's not important? It's exactly that, because that's not important. Because have you ever noticed, it doesn't matter which side, Republican, Democrat, gets elected, we always end up going down the same road. Sometimes it's towards the left side, sometimes towards the right side. We're always going down the exact same road. So the debates don't really matter. All they do is they get people whipped up, and they, it's, if you heard the expression divide and conquer, divide and conquer that's very what we, well. have you been following these polls? Every, how come every time you turn out, it's 47, 47? Right, I just seen that one. That, that's the last poll I seen, 47, 47. That I, was, actually, was that before the debate or after? I think it was like the before. Yeah. I think it's well, and then it shifted, and then the jobs numbers came out. So Obama gets a boost out today, of that. Hey, today the jobs number came out. Lowest in forty year, four years. Woo. Is that good? No, is that good? That's not four good. years ago. Sucked too. Yeah. So I mean, he brought them back, right? Is that so? Is it's not good. So the poll numbers really show that we have been divided, and so they can conquer us. So you got to listen to Dave closely because with Dave. Bad don't mean bad. Bad sometimes mean good. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're very precise with words around here. Okay, let's get straight to it. Okay, let's go over some of the things. But can I, let me throw this out okay, there too, because hey, I'm not an expert. That's what you're here for, yeah. All right. Okay. But so what happened was a few years ago, I started this show, Get With the Program. Okay, watch that. Hey, watch Get With the Program. Let's give it up. When do your show come on? Tell my audience when your show comes uh, on. What you need to do is go to um, vacuvilletv.org uh -huh. and. Uh, Right there, you can communicate with us. You can get signed up for the schedule and things like that, so you know exactly what it is. I don't know that it's got a certain time right now. Right. I know that the program scheduling is going through some uh, some changes and improvements. So we're uh, go to vacavilletv.org. There you go. If you know how to get one, get with the program. So continue. Back when I started my show, I started learning things. In fact, I s opened up my show and said, you know, I don't agree with all these videos that I've been putting on there, but I. It made me think, and that's what was important. And I certainly didn't agree with you know, all of them, but it got the juices flowing. So I became a student. Okay. I started teaching myself things. Okay. And that's where I'm at right now. So the, the things that I'm talking about are things that my studies have brought me to so far. Okay. There's, there's some things that I'm convinced of that are what they are, but there's other things where I'm just piecing together evidence that I found. And as I find more evidence, you know, I'm, I, I am open-minded enough to say, you know what, I was wrong on that, Let, let's take another look or something like that. Okay. But there's some things that are absolutely true that you can't mess with. That doesn't mean we can't talk about it, though. That's right. Because we're here to talk about truth. That's what this show is about, dialogue. I mean, it's true. What's your truth may not be my truth, but when I speak it, when I speak it, it's my truth. And I'm sure when you speak it, it's truth as you know it. As I know it? As you know it, okay. Now, some of the things that, let's go over some of the th questions, some of the topics in the debate. Now, when they first came out, I guess, wait, wait, the moderator. Jim Lair? Jim Lair. Well, I mean, what was going on with him? Even before they came out, af the next day, and everybody just beat him up, he could not control the debate. So do we keep him as a moderator, or do they change him? Will he be the next moderator for the next two? Probably, because well. check what? He, he's got you talking about it. This was a show. This is, you know, about like WWF. It's, you know, it's all staged, and you have the drama that's made up alongside the ring, and that's what we've got with this presidential debate. It's staged. Um, and as I say, you know, every, it's all scripted, right. but the whole concept of it's staged. And uh, the moderators out there, you know, acting all frustrated, and it, it's all part of the show. All part of it's the show. It's a huge show. And you're watching it, you're talking about it, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. You mean that junk made it on the forum? That's what they, I shouldn't, I shouldn't even be discussing this on the forum. We don't want no junk, we don't want no filler shows on the forum, we want serious. Well, you have to, see that's the thing, you got to know what you're talking about before you can start to learn about it. You got to be exposed. That's why one day you'll be older 
and you're going to be able to learn about all those experiences. You're going to start piecing things together. That's why young people like, like Mr. Bowtie Bruce, he's at a disadvantage right now because he doesn't have these experiences that he can go back and draw upon. Mm. And he's going to have to rely upon what you know, his elders might be teaching him. Yeah, whatever he hear, he just believe from the people. Huh? I'm hoping not. I'm hoping not. He too. needs to learn that gifted, take that gifted discernment that he has. It, you know, you eat the meat and chick spit out the bones. That's the thing. Eat take it in. Meat. I need to write this down. On eat here. the meat. Eat the meat and spit out the bones. Now, what does that mean? That means you take it in. You use your gifted discernment to figure out what's Bolshevik and what needs to be thrown away, and you keep the good stuff. Well, I'm glad you know this is a family show. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the economy. Yeah. They spoke on the economy. Um, of course, Romney said Obama has the economy in total disarray. He's saying that when he gets in office, he's going to fix everything with, with his magic pill. But he didn't really come out and say what he would do. He just said he was going to do it. Talk about that a little bit. The economy... None of these guys know what the heck they're talking about. Or if they do, they're not letting that out there. There is certain things that could be done that would fix this economy in a week. Wow. None of these guys Seven are going to do that. Seven days. Or less. Or less. Uh, do you ever listen to this Tom Sullivan guy? He used to be Sacramento. Yes, now he's nationwide. Yes, yes, yes. Nice guy. Pleasant to listen to. He was talking last week about how we need to pay down our national debt. Right. That's the very wrong thing to do. That's going to create more of an economic problem. And the reason is because you're thinking of the system that we have as a system you might have in your home where you do the right thing. You take out debt, you pay it back out like you promised. Okay. Our national economic system is a debt-based economy. Every dollar that we have in circulation was borrowed into existence. And if you pay back the debt, you're taking money out of the economic system. For instance, you, got, you remember um, the Great Depression back in the 30s, right? I've heard about it, yes. It, yeah, you probably weren't there. No, I wasn't there. I just heard about it. just read a little bit. Um, 1929, there was 12, uh, about $1,200 for every man, woman, and child in the United States in circulation in the money system. Okay. Three years later, there was $12 for every man, woman, and child. <laughs> so what that means is they took the money supply and they shrunk it down. And the reason that... There, we still have people after the Great Depression started, right? We still had needs. We still had people that needed shelter, food, cars, things like that. What stopped? Because we still had people that could make those things. We still had the raw materials in the ground. What stopped? We didn't have those little pieces of green paper to float around because the bankers sucked it all out of the system, which is exactly what bankers do. And when you have a debt-based economy, you can do that. You say... I need you to pay off your loan. I'm calling in your loan right now. Or I'm not going to issue. Does that not sound like what we're doing right now? Well, you, it's a hard time to, to get a loan out there. Um, banks just aren't lending. You have to have like 800 credit score. Banks aren't lending. Um, well, they definitely did. They, they definitely um, made sure they, they took everyone's equity out of their houses. And, they, and it surprised me when they said the only way that we can help you is if you don't pay your mortgage and if you don't pay your mortgage then you're going to tear up your credit score what we can talk about the credit score for just a second is that the credit score is a i love to go into debt score <laughs> the, if you got an 800 that says you know what i really love to go into debt and i want these bankers to think that i am so good that they can trust me to lend me money okay i get that so but i think you what sound it is like you don't you don't deal with no credit cards or you don't want to go into no oh, debt. well let me ask you this if Say you got some money that you want to invest, right? Okay. And, uh, you know, 6% interest isn't the same as half a 12%. 12% interest is more than 6%. It's, it's like a tripling or so of 6% because it, it's exponentially bigger. Okay. 18%, 6%, 18% is like this huge. And so you put money in there, 18%, you're doubling your money every, what, 20 months or something like that. Do you know where you can get 18% on your money? Uh-uh. Don't, don't send it to the damn credit card company. You look at your statement, what are you paying, 18%? There's a lot of people now paying 30%. Can you imagine where you can get 30% on your money? You'd be happy. Banks are happy. So all of the money in circulation is borrowed into existence. Mr. Tom Sullivan, Mr. Smart Financial Guy, he should know this. Right. 
So if you pay off the debt, you're taking money out of circulation, just like we did at the Great Depression. $1,200 came down to about $12. And it caused nothing but, you know, just, just despair throughout the entire country and spread throughout the world. So we don't, it, to fix our problem, what we need to do is change our, the way our money system works. We cannot have debt-based money anymore. And if we change that, within days, our whole economy would, uh, would turn around. People would have confidence in us. So therefore, on economy, I have to give the win to Obama because we are definitely in debt. That is a great way to look at it. Hey, Obama won. I'm going to get it to Obama because I think, was it, 16 trillion? Yeah. So whoever's going to put us further in debt is, is actually man. doing the country a, a service. All right. Although, when you say debt, all these TARP bailouts and these too big to fail bailouts, do you know where all that money went? Where? It went to banks. The Federal Reserve, which is a private corporation that our country contracted with, um, 99 years ago to to issue the money basically to be in control of the money supply which is why all of our money is debt based because the government borrows its money from the from the Federal Reserve right. so you've probably heard that in the economy you know they just they just turn on the printing presses and all this money gets just printed and we're gonna have inflation and maybe hyperinflation but you know what they've been adding so much quote money to our money supply through all these bailouts but none of it's getting down to the people. In right. fact, we're having deflation right now. And so don't expect any of the, this big spending that Obama's gonna be doing or Romney to have any effect on our personal lives down here. I mean, it's, if there's anything, it's like crumbs from the table. This is deep, fellas. I, and this is why I want you not to just look at television and listen to what they're telling you. Get the books. You know your history, educate yourself on this politics, on your economy, on everything. You have to educate yourself because according to our political analysts over here, man, you're getting nothing but crumbs off the table. Win, lose, or draw, no matter who's in office, okay? Next thing they went on. Healthcare or otherwise known as Obamacare. And he likes that term, so I'm going to use it myself. Obamacare, what do you think about it? Um, it it's absolutely meaningless. Nothing. It, it means nothing to what we have. I mean, there's parts of it that, like the death panels where they're going to be able to, to you know, kill off more people and they're going to be able to have taxpayer funded. You know, have you ever heard of the phrase, the government is, is con governs with the consent of the people or the consent of the governed? That means that the power the government has is because us, the people, lent them the power, right? Exactly. So if the government kills somebody in a war, maybe, they're doing that in your name. Or if they pay for Planned Parenthood to open up a, you know, to, to, to do abortions, and they use taxpayer money, then they're aborting babies in your name because you're a taxpayer. Okay, but didn't they, didn't we have a, some type of election to be a vote to be able to have abortions? Or was that Roe versus, what was Roe versus Wade? It was a Supreme Court decision back in early 70s, 72, okay, 74. Still wasn't that for the abortions, right, to have an abortion? Um, well, here's the thing, too. Just because the government makes a law or the Supreme Court makes a decision doesn't make it a just decision. Case in point, how many laws have been repealed or changed, or how many? Do you remember the uh, we had a constitutional amendment? But once it's been once it's been appealed, then it becomes a new law. So then now it's that's law. So we had a constitutional amendment that did away with, you know, it was prohibition, did away with alcohol in the right. United States. So during that ten years that we had prohibition, then alcohol was what outlawed. It was immoral. It was bad. Go to jail for it. And then all of a sudden. They, we changed it, we had a, another amendment, and then it's okay, everything's fine. So was, were the, was the government right during that 10 year period? And then right there, how can it be right on both sides of the issue? It can't be. It just makes up laws. Will it, in fact, did you know this? I heard this statistic the other day. Nowadays, the average person commits about 600 felonies a day and don't even know it. <laughs> don't even Ooh. know it. So uh, all you three strikers. You got 600 of them a day, man. You got to be on your job. 
Uh, and I just read this this morning, and the, there's a 79-year-old former Marine, and um, he's, he's been collecting things, and he puts it in his front yard, and he's selling them. And, you know, it's not junk. Uh, I think it was ones like, like a little toy carousel or something. But the city came by, and they said, you got to move all this stuff out of your front yard because it's junk. And he didn't. He said, because I'm putting these out there so I can sell them to make money to pay the medical bills for my wife. This is a 79-year-old man. <clears throat> so he just went to court, and he just found him guilty. He's got to serve 30 days in jail because he didn't take these things. And it wasn't just, you know, carpeted wall-to-wall -wall junk in his front yard. There's like four or five things. And they're putting him in jail for 30 days. 79-year-old former Marine selling stuff to pay for the medical bills for his wife. And what are they doing? Put him in jail for 30 days. Okay, so is I, the government right on that? I mean, it, it's to the point where I understand what you're saying, but on the same token, I mean, you you justifying him breaking the law because evidently, if they're going to lock him up for 30 days, you're going to justify him breaking the law based on the fact that he's doing it for his wife. So who else can say, well, I went and stole money from this person or did this based on and break the law based on um, I'm doing it for my wife or my son needs this. So you, if you're breaking the law with a reason, everybody can justify their reason for breaking the law. I think we've swerved right into it. Not, Dang, he set me up. You see that? Not all laws are lawful. In fact, most of the laws that are out there on the books are, are not lawful. But if they're on the books, they lost. At the end of the day, they yeah. lost. And all those Nazi soldiers are just following orders, just following their laws. Yeah. They don't make what they did right. Exactly. But at the same time, if it was law at the time, it was law. I mean, okay, now what is the end law? The Constitution? Absolutely not. What's the end law? What do we, what do we follow first? Have you ever checked out the Declaration of Independence? Okay, yeah. It's that do the document that Jefferson penned to say, you know, us as a country, we are not under the authority of the king. And these are the reasons why. He said, because us as free people, we ascribe to the only law that there really is, which is natural law. Well, who, who creates natural law? Somebody has to be in front of it. God. And who speaks for God? God. I told it, you. And I so told you this, so this is Dave Edwards. This is this Get is not going to be a, a religion. This is just a little piece of it. You really want to hear? Him, I mean, get down. So make sure you watch Get with the program. Exactly, appreciate that. So, but natural law basically says this: my stuff is my stuff, your stuff is your stuff. I won't mess with yours. You don't mess with mine, and we'll get along fine. Right to bear arms. Oh, absolutely. Because if I have stuff, I need to have the ability to protect stuff. Right. And if I have stuff, and I want some of your stuff, I don't steal it. I, I talk with you, and we trade. And so part, another part of natural law is the ability to trade. Now, if I say I'm going to do something, but then I fail to do it, I'm violating natural law. Because I'm lying. So, that's a vi so it's, it, it's so easy. My stuff's my stuff. Your stuff's your stuff. I can protect my stuff. You can protect your stuff. Um, and I have to do what I say. If I don't want to do it, I don't say I'm going to do it. And it's no big deal. That, in a nutshell, is it. Everything else in the Constitution. Do you know about the Constitution? I have a little knowledge on it. I've been there. there there's, this is some research I've started doing real recently. Uh, I came across a guy, an author from the 1870s named, Ly 1870s, named Lysander Spooner. Uh -huh. And I am learning so much from this guy. The Constitution is basically a fraud. When the Founding Fathers got together to create that, they were given the charter from all their states or the authority from all their states to amend the Articles of Confederation. And when all these delegates, they got to this room, the first thing they did was they pulled down all the blinds, they locked the doors, took the Articles of Confederation, and threw in the trash can and said, you know what, we're going to get together and make us a constitution. Now, the people that did this, were these normal people like you and me that go out and bust our butts and, and work and things like No, these are the people that had land and money and power and influence. Um, so they basically did it to, for their own behalf. Right. Take care of themselves. And they put things in there that actually benefit them. And it's like, let me ask you this. Rat poison. 
is 98% good food, 2% poison. But what happens when you eat it? You die, especially if you're a rat. <laughs> so that's the Constitution. It's got some good things in there, and it's got some bad things in there. But altogether, it's bad. So now, after they got done with this, they changed the rules. Articles of Confederation said that every single colony or state had to agree to it. Now they said, well, you know, we have to have just a, a super majority to agree with it, so we don't have to have all of them. And then what they did is they put together this, this traveling road show to go around to all the states to have them ratify this new constitution. And every single state's going, you know what? I understand what you're trying to do here. And I know that you've got all the money, so you're probably going to make this happen, but what we want to make sure is we have some protection. So the states got together, and I think they made up something like 112 amendments to this. And then at the, at the end of it, they whittled it down to 12 and then 10. So we have the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, which is the Bill of Rights. Those are very close to natural law. Basically, uh, you know, it says that you have the freedom of speech. You have the freedom of religion. You have the right not to be, you know, just taken off the street and bunged up in jail for the rest of your life. Right. Um, and it also says in there that the federal government has only the power that this specific constitution gives it, all the other power stays back with the people in the state. But that's just gone thrown out the window. They just ignore that. And what parts of the constitution do they actually abide by? The parts that benefit them. The rich people, the corporations, the power of government. That's what it is. So no, the constitution, it, it has, Put that, when people say, you know, well, I need my constitutional rights, we need to fight for the Constitution, they probably have, you know, the best of intentions, but they don't, they don't know what they're talking about. And I can say that because nope. that was me just a couple years ago. What and do you mean? I, I was going around saying, yeah, we need to get back to constitutional law. You know what? We don't. Bill of Rights, good. Constitution, rat poison. Damn. you watching the forum. Okay, so should Romney appeal Obamacare? Yes or no? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Romney had Romney Care in uh, Massachusetts really? that went further than beyond than whatever uh, you know, uh, Obama has planned for Obamacare. So there again, put, put that down. Obama has another strike in the good column because his Obamacare doesn't go as far as Romney Care. It's going down. I don't know how you won this Romney, but we, we're, we're tearing this whole debate apart and we're going to find out why or is everyone saying that Romney won this debate. Okay. Jobs. Let's get into it. Steve Jobs? jobs? We already did no, that. No, not Steve. Obama. Job, job rate is down now. Um, what is it? 7% um, of non-workers or? Well, it's kind of like we were talking about before, the Great Depression. Yeah. You start taking all those little pieces of green paper out of the economy and there's just a not enough because it's like Greece is what it is. The currency is supposed to be the Greece that greases the, the gears of the uh, economy. Okay. And so you take some of that grease out, things are going to slow down. So they take some of that money out of the system, and you don't have enough to, you can't spend as much as you were. If you're a, a business, you can't buy as much inventory as you used to. That means those people can't make as much product as they used to. So it all just slowly starts to, and where do you cut? You, two things, you can either increase efficiency or cut costs. And because we've had all these tough times over the years, and with technology, we've increased efficiency, you know, greatly, which is a good thing, but we've also cut jobs, because we have to cut expenses. And with the government, there's so many, there's so much expense to having an employee. It's almost not even worth doing. You know, um, we talked about this, me and Bruce, Bruce and I, we talked before, we were thinking, and saying that with technology coming out and these so-called robots, you know, doing jobs that humans would do, you know, it's almost going to be impossible not for job the job rate to go down with, I mean, with everything being ran by robots right now. Yes, I'm not concerned about that, and I'll tell you why. Tell me why. In a free market, that means a market that is not dictated, didn't have the constraints of government saying that you will do this. If you have those checkout stands with the automated thing, you check out your, I don't even go to it. That's my protest because I want to go to a person. If some people want to go to it, fine. But we'll let the market decide. If the store says, you know, not enough people are going there, it's taking up extra space, we need to put real ones back there, then let them do it. If there's another store that's, that caters to that clientele that likes to do things with technology and automated, you know, let the market decide. 
Um, but the cool thing about technology is that it gives the power to smaller and smaller groups of people, smaller companies, in fact, like individual entrepreneurs, to do things that they could never have imagined before. This is true. I mean, you have, um, you got this thing that looks basically like a printer, but it creates things. They have them that um, it makes some kind of a polymer plastic. Oh, that 3D model. The 3D model. Yeah, I've seen that, that's incredible. And not only do they have that for plastic, but they have it, you, they, they create hearts. Hearts for, I don't know, pigs or people, whatever. It takes light, instead of ink, it's live cells, and it just builds it up and builds it up until you have a three-dimensional heart with this printer. This is stuff mm -hmm. they're working on right now. So technology is great. It allow and because it gets cheaper and cheaper, that means that um, you know smaller and smaller businesses can afford to get that technology. And with technology, you know you have the the scale of economy or economy of scale. That means if you make a hundred things th just exactly like, they can make them cheaper than if you were just to make one thing. But now with technology, you can almost customize every single little thing, and that means you can give better service at lower prices to your customers. So no matter who's in office, jobs is, what's the job situation? The job situation, as long as the government's in the way. I mean, look at California. Have you tried starting a business in this state? <laughs> oh my gosh, there are so many hoops. You have to get environmental impact statements. Um, there's this thing called Agenda 21. If you go to build a new place, it has to be all in, in Vacaville. They have just passed this um, climate action plan. And it says that if you build a building, that the front door can't face the parking lot because you want to discourage people from driving their cars to the business. And you have to have showers in your business so if your employees ride their bikes to work, they can go take a shower before they clock in. And, and this is Vacaville, and this is supposed to make it easier to have businesses. And then, of course, you get those shysters that go around and um, they have the Americans with Disability Acts. And, you know, I'm all for accommodating your customers, right? But if you have a bar, say for a, a, a person that's in a wheelchair or something, and it's a half inch too high or too low, they can come in and they can sue you. But what they don't do is they don't sue you. You get these shyster lawyers that come in there and say, you know what, we're going to sue you for $10,000. You cut me a check right now for five, and we'll say it's okay. That's what's and going that's on. happened right here in Vacaville. That's I know people. That's happening all over the place. That's happening all over the place. You have actually, I was looking at, this one guy, I mean, he's in a wheelchair, and that's what his he does. He just go around and look for buildings that's not in appliance. And his lawyer, and they suit. And they saying, this, don't get on us. We didn't create the law. There you go. So let's take it back to natural law. That law that's causing all these problems, it's, it is, it's an illegal law. The government gets more power if there's conflict in the community because that means they need someone to come in. If you just leave people alone, People, by and large, are just gonna get along fine. Is that to say there's not some buttheads out there? Yeah, there are. But you know what, when someone does something that violates natural law, we need to hold them accountable. Do you know how our DA's office in this county, there's people that go in there and they get let out with a slap on their wrist, if that. It's unbelievable, and um, I hear that the police, they'll arrest the same person over and over and over again. And then they, so the question is, is where's the justice, where's the punishment, where do you hold someone accountable? So the buttheads, you start holding them accountable, then you know things will start working them, them, their, themselves out. The laws that are illegal. Laws are illegal. La laws, laws that are uh, unlawful are illegal. That doesn't fall up under natural law. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and this is part of uh, the same notion where so we have a town, right? And you have the rights to your stuff, but you don't want to spend all day sitting on your front porch with a gun and a, and a hose in case someone comes to your house to break in or there's a fire. So what you do as a community is you get together and you hire a couple firemen and a couple cops. So that frees you up to go do these other things. Maybe buy some high-tech equipment and start a business. But it's when the cops take this power that we've supposedly that we've given them and they run amok with it that they come into our house now and say you know we're going to harass you um, did you see a couple days ago there was this um this older hispanic lady that was out at a peaceful protest and this police lieutenant i want to say it was philadelphia but it was somewhere back east 
And he came up and someone caught on video and he smacked her in the face. And only because it was on video was he held accountable and he lost his job. That's Which, right. A shout out because their police department fired him because he did wrong. Now video cameras, that's why we're out there. That's why the forum is there. I mean, we, we're, in the, we're in the streets. We're, we're going to see you. So if you're doing wrong, hey, we might just get you on our camera too. So you got to be on your P's and Q's. So let's talk drugs for a second. Okay, let's talk drugs. So your, your property is your property. Right. Your body is your body. Body is your body. You want to do something to your body? Is it okay? Uh, not according to law. You can do something to your body, but the fact of you, I uh, see where you're going with this, but the fact of you is not that you did it to your body, is that, okay, if you can do something to your body without possessing this illegal drug over here, then do it. But once you pick this illegal drug up, that's the crime. So now if you do it to your body, you committed a crime. It ain't that you've done it to your body. It's the fact that you've done it to your body with this illegal. So if you want to drink milk until you drown, that's not illegal. That's okay. Do that. If you want to um, eat salad until you choke to death, go ahead. So now who said that was illegal? It the didn't law used to be illegal. It's legal now. It used to be perfectly legal it's under natural law. It's legal now, so you know what else should have did it when it was free. You know what else is illegal now? What's that? To have a soda in New York State that's bigger than 16 ounces. That's right. You know what else is against the law now? That's right, because they passed it. That's you, just like drink, voting for Schwarzenegger. You, drink you voted for Schwarzenegger. Milk. Don't get mad at what he does. Don't get mad because he's a fool. Right. That milk thing again? What is it? Oh, you can't drink. It's against the law to have unpasteurized milk. Raw milk against the law. They just had a bunch of thugs in Southern California raid this outfit, haul them all to jail, and dump all their milk. It's not marijuana. It's milk. It's illegal milk under the law. And do, you, do you at some point start to think, you know, maybe that law is not lawful? Well, then we need to get in there and change that law. And if you don't, if you, but if the person the, that created the law can't change the law, then don't vote him back in the office again. Put somebody in the office that can change that law. If you notice we have lawmakers, do you know what their job is to do? What's that? Make laws. Okay. Do you have, maybe that's why we have so many laws. Because we have all these full-time lawmakers. Well, you can go online and you can pull up like frivolous laws. And there was a law I saw up under that frivolous law that, you can beat your wife as long as it's on the court steps or something like that in one state. As long as you do it on the court steps. I mean, that's so silly. That's not up under natural law. Not at all. But at the same time, it's legal. Does it make it lawful? Hey. So anyway, the whole point about that was that just because something's illegal doesn't mean it's wrong. No, no, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means it's illegal and you can go to jail for it. So there's a lot of people that's sitting in jail that's morally right, that probably was a victim of circumstance. You know, um, if someone, if I'm walking and someone walk up and I'm walking with my mother and somebody come up and do something to her, I mean, I'm going to act a fool. You know, I might continue until it's something really, they may not breathe. I might choke them until they die. Who knows? I might be in that amount of rage. But at the same time, I killed this person, you know, so it's up to them. Sometime you can make it through a self-defense, and sometime they can say you went overboard and get you for manslaughter. So not too long ago down in Texas, there was this guy who lives down on a little farm, has a five-year-old daughter, right? Yeah. And so the hired hand from that, that they knew, I guess he was maybe from the next door farm or something like that, the father's out and he hears something, and he goes around the corner, and he sees this hired hand raping his five-year-old daughter. Father becomes enraged goes over there, chokes the guy until he's dead. Sound like my story. The media comes out there, and this is in Texas, the media's going, Sheriff, why aren't you going to arrest that guy? And he's, they're looking at him like, why, what'd he do? He didn't do anything wrong. You know, he's protecting his, his daughter. Right. He had every right to do that. But now fast forward, back in England, there's this guy and his wife that live in this cottage out in the country, and it's been robbed, I don't know, five times or something like that. And so he has a shotgun. It's a perfectly legal, com you know, completely registered, all compliant with their laws. They come in the house. The guy has his wife over there. He's protecting her too. And he has the gun. 
and he, he, he warns them, says, I'm going to shoot. They don't care. And he shoots one in the arm. He says, what's trying to kill him? And then so that guy went down and the other guy ran off. So the cops came, took the couple, took them to jail. And there they sat because they were defending their own property. Does that law make sense? Is that within natural law? No. Well, in England, but because you could defend your household out in Cali out in the United States, so someone if this had happened in the United States, so I guess it's just depending on where you are. You got to know your laws. I mean, laws change from city to city, from state to state, and I guess from country to country. You know, so what's legal here may not be legal there. So you know, most people though they have this sense of what's right and wrong. It's like you know to kill somebody, to punch somebody, is wrong. To rape somebody is wrong to uh, drink raw milk, who cares? So wh why is that? Because, you know, like I said earlier, that natural law comes from God and we're all creative beings. And so we have a sense of that natural law inside of us. Some people who don't believe in God necessarily, you know, they still have, there, there's all these philosophers that come up with it, and it about, you know, this human condition, how, you know, there's righteousness and justice that man does upon each other. Well, that all comes back to we have this sense of natural law inside of us. Well, I just saw one place where if your wife commit adultery, they can stone her. Um, if you steal something, they cut your hands off. I just saw this so not even seven days ago. Um, it it's not like a violation Israel of natural or law. Something like that. But it's happening. I mean, but that's their law. And you, I guess you better know it. Because if you steal, show me the hand you stole it with, basically. Right. And if you're a wife and you cheat, they're going to stone you to death. Know this. So you know what would be cool is if us as a country, we set the example. We said, you know what, we have actually freedom and we follow natural law in this country and we give everybody the freedoms that we always talk about when we're thumping the Constitution. If we actually did that in real life, we could be an example for these other countries. <sighs> Wouldn't that be great? Last issue. Oh. Taxes. Yeah. Um, it's saying Obama saying that Romney cannot have run his plan without raising taxes for second class, middle class. Romney's saying he can do it. And what do you think? It's what? all, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's all a charade. It's, it's an illusion. Charade. It's a game. What is the purpose of taxes? Do you know, you remember Ronald Reagan, right? Yes, I do very well. Back in 84, he Just commissioned. Just say no program, Nancy Reagan. Nancy hey. Reagan, yeah. She got on her Ouija board and got that, I'm sure. <laughs> he commissioned um, what was called the Grace Commission to find out where does all our tax money go? The Grace Commission reported back to him. And this is, you know, uh, this is not just some stupid people out there. These are people who were paid to do thorough you know, academic research on where your tax money goes. They reported back to Ronald Reagan that not one nickel of your tax money goes to the military, goes to fix roads, go to welfare programs, anywhere else except to pay on the debt, to pay interest on the debt. All the money that you pay in taxes, interest on the debt. And most of that, some of that debt's held by what, China, Japan, most of it held by our own central bank, the Federal Reserve. So all the interest, I mean, all the income taxes that you pay go to a private corporation bank. And if you don't pay them, they have government hired goons to come out and beat you up and put you in prison. They call them IRS agents. <laughs> and so what do we have taxes for? There's a couple reasons we have taxes. One is this, you know, we're talking about if you have the printing press going and going and going, you get too much money into the economy and you get inflation which means all the prices start going up. Right. So what they do with taxes is it's kind of like, um, is a, uh, well, picture a balloon, right? So the more air you put in it, the bigger and bigger it gets. At some point it's gonna pop. So what taxes are is like, this is the economy. Taxes are like the little, you know, letting air at the bottom. It's taking off some of the extra cash out of the system is what it's for. And so that's, that's the function of taking of taxes, but then also it is a, a means of controlling you. Through the tax code, they can make you do things. I mean, how many people go out and get a mortgage because they can get a tax deduction for it? A lot of people do. Mortgage, you know, mort, mort, mortality, mortgage is, you know,
payments until you die. <laughs> Why? And what is that? That's another form of slavery. I mean, just a little bit. So, um, you, what people? Uh, you probably know people that pay what fifty percent income tax bracket, right? Yeah. And it's so that means that for half the year you're paying money. I mean, you're working for free for the man. Yeah, exactly. So if you're working for free because you have to, because if you don't, you know they're going to come get you. If you don't pay them that money, then what? You're you're a slave. You are a modern day slave. Six months out of the year. Six months. Is six months too much? Two months enough? Would you like want to be a slave for 30 days? Or how about not at all? Especially when all your income tax goes to a private corporation to boost their profits. It doesn't go to the government, doesn't go to the roads, doesn't go to the schools. Now, I'm not saying some of your local taxes, your property taxes, go to the schools, things like that. I'm talking about your federal income taxes. Every bit. This is incredible. I'm the A form. I know your head is spinning because, like I told you, my head is always spinning after talking to Dave. This is incredible. I'm glad that he has come on the show to help enlighten us a little bit because we don't, we don't have that much longer before the election. And those of you that need to vote, um, go to check this website out. GottaVote.com. G-O-T-T-A. Vote. Dot com. Check that site out. Make sure you get in there. Uh, but hold it, hold it. So, should people vote in this presidential election? Yes or no? It they doesn't feel make like a it. Difference. Doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. So, but what about the people that say if you don't vote, you can't say nothing? Yeah, I mean, if you ain't voting and you ain't in a, you can't say nothing. Um, I'm still, I'm still one of their slaves. I'm still paying taxes. Yeah, it's kind of a it's, a, it's a real stupid argument to say, you can't complain because you didn't pick which slave master you want. Oh, it's going down on the forum. If, you, if we make it to another week, we don't get shut down. <laughs> hey, we're going to keep this going up because we have less than about seven weeks, less than seven weeks for this election to go through. And that's what the rest of the forum is going to be about. Bruce and I will be here. We will be out in the uh, public. Where we're getting um, people from the 707 area views, such as Dave's, um, and finding out how you feel about this election that's coming up. Should you vote? Should you not vote? Um, are you a slave? Are you not a slave? Should you pay taxes? Shouldn't you pay taxes? Um, hey, is laws legal? <laughs> it is going down. Remember, gotavote.com. Go down to your register, register, um, pick somebody. You already know where I'm going. I made it no secret. Obama's my man. I'm going out. I recommend you get out here and you vote. And I'm going to tell you right now, I know what Obama's doing. He's saving some of his best stuff for the last debate. Um, they say Romney won this one. I don't see it like that at all. I see Obama just kind of pacing himself. He's already president. He's did what he's did. I mean, you know his program. You've been with him for four years. So, if you like me and you don't want Romney to be in office, vote for Obama. Um, Bruce will come on here tell you his own. I mean, he already done told you anyway how he feel about the presidential debate and the presidential um, election. So again, if it doesn't make a difference, like my man Dave say, whether you vote or not, then vote, because it's not going to make a difference anyway. So get up and go vote and vote for Obama. This has been the forum. I want to thank my man Dave Edwards from Get With the Thanks Program. Thanks so much, Charles. We will definitely have him back before this election is over. This is Forum 6. And I figure by the time Forum 8, we should be just about around the election. And I think we may sit and watch this. And who do you think is going to win? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's what I'm going to name this show. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Again, this is Charles White, and you have been watching the forum. GotaVote.com. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce, for letting me have your chair today. Thank you. All right.